Surgical anatomy, application of the international classification of the abdominal war planes. The aim of our video is an anatomical dynamic description of the abdominal war planes with cadaveric dissection described in the international classification of abdominal war planes. The anterior abdominal wall is a hexagonal area bounded by the xiphoid process at the top with delineation of the supralateral edges by the costal margins. Below, it extends along the iliac crests and narrows to the superior edge of the pubic bone of the pelvis in the midline. The inferolateral margins are defined by the inguinal ligaments bilaterally. We did an anatomical dissection of the abdominal wall planes with formalin cadaver. The abdominal wall could be divided into midline and anterolateral groups of muscles. The rectus abdominis and the pyramidalis muscle comprise the midline group. The bilateral anterolateral groups are composed of a trilaminar structure consisting of the external oblique muscles, internal oblique muscles, and transversus abdominis muscles. The aponeurotic component of internal oblique also carries a crucial distinction occurring above and below the arcuate line. Above the arcuate line, the aponeurosis splits to form two sheets that encompass the rectus abdominis, contributing to both the anterior and posterior sheaths. The innermost muscle in the anterolateral group is the transversus abdominis muscle. It lies directly under the internal oblique muscle and above the transversalis fascia. The transversalis fascia is a thin line of connective tissue lying between the deep surface of the transversus abdominis and the extraperitoneal fat. Below the arcuate line, the aponeurosis of the transversus is responsible for merging with the internal oblique as it passes anterior to the rectus complex. Last year, the International Classification of Abdominal Wall Planes, ICAP, was published in the British Journal of Surgery to describe mess insertion for ventral hernia repair. The aim was to achieve consensus by enlisting internationally recognized academic abdominal wall reconstruction surgeons and employing Delphi methodology to establish an international classification. The process consists of five phases, questionnaire development, expert panel selection, 20 international abdominal wall surgeons were selected and three rounds of questionnaire distribution. Finally, the consensus proposed 10 abdominal wall planes. The onlay plane is composed anteriorly with subcutaneous tissue and posteriorly with the anterior rectus sheath and external oblique. Typical position of the mesh is in the supraaponeurotic plane. Anterectus plane is formed by anterior rectus sheath in the anterior plane and rectus abdominis muscle in the posterior plane, as described in the Chevrolet's technique. Inlay plane. The mesh is attached to edges of hernia defect with no overlap. This technique is in disuse. The limits of the interoblique plane are anteriorly external oblique muscle and posteriorly internal oblique muscle. This is the plane dissected in the open anterior component separation technique. The retro-oblique plane is delimited anterior by internal oblique muscle, posterior by transversus abdominis muscle. Retrorectus is composed by the rectus abdominis muscle anteriorly and posterior rectus sheath posteriorly. This plane is used in the Reeves stopper technique. The limits of retromuscular tau performed are anterior rectus abdominis muscle, transversus abdominis muscle, posterior, posterior rectus sheath, transversalis fascia, posterior component separation via transversus abdominis muscle release, the tau procedure. 
Transversalis facial plane is formed by anteriorly posterior rectus sheath, transversus abdominis muscle. Posteriorly, it is composed by the transversalis fascia medial and lateral. The preperitoneal space is defined anterior transversalis fascia and posterior with the peritoneum. This plane is the gold standard in the umbilical hernia repair, TEP and TAP, laparoscopic groin hernia repair. And the intraperitoneal plane is delimited with the peritoneum anteriorly and the abdominal cavity. A proper knowledge of the abdominal wall anatomy will help to choose the right location of mesh insertion and contribute to greater clinical value. A standard nomenclature for the abdominal wall is necessary for mesh placement during ventral hernia repair.